Hi, I'm Eric Lanask, and uh, thanks for joining us for TMC Newsroom on the Road. I'm here at the uh, historic Stonely Hotel in Dallas, Texas. I'm talking now with uh, Varaha's Ed Cox. Ed, thanks for joining us again. My pleasure, sir. Glad to see you. Uh, it's been a little while since we chatted last time. Uh, what's, uh, what's the latest uh, that's been going on at Varaha? Well, the fixed mobile convergence space is, of course, always about the handsets. So what, mm -hmm. what devices do you support? What ones are coming down the line? And it's a little bit like chasing a moving train that's about 800 miles an hour. So the first piece that's coming is that we're just escaping from the beta phase for the BlackBerry lineup. Uh, the good news is that if you've got a GSM dual mode BlackBerry, you'll be fine. If you've got a CDMA based, you're going to be a little disappointed. Uh, there's architectural differences in the rim line between the GSM devices and the CDMA. Uh, and so uh, we've got support for things like the 9700, the 9000, the 8520, uh, et cetera. Of course, we can use any BlackBerry phone, virtually any BlackBerry phone, in a single mode, cellular only. Uh, but those dual mode devices are pretty much showing their colors. Uh, the GSM is the way to go for right now. Uh, there is a new couple of devices that are coming out that are dual cellular frequency, meaning they support both GSM and CDMA, mm -hmm. and so we're hopeful because of that that we'll pick up a couple more for some of the CDMA-based carriers in the States. So given what you were just saying, what's the impact been on uh, your customers, uh, particularly, I guess, those Verizon users? Well, the, uh, the, advantage, the disadvantage is, of course, with the CDMA phones is you don't have a BlackBerry answer for them. The advantage is those same CDMA uh, vendors of, of Verizon and Sprint have been very big Android proponents. And so that's the next card in the deck to play as far as the devices are concerned. As we are leaving the beta phase for BlackBerry and coming out GA with that, we're entering the beta phase for Android. Mm -hmm. And because of the simplicity and the openness of the software development kit on Android, we've actually been able to come up with a very capable client with release 1.0. Uh, a perfect comparison would be normally the way the clients are developed in the FMC space is you do cellular first, then you do Wi-Fi, and then you bridge the two together to do the handoff. Mm -hmm. Well, with the Android, because the SDK is so open, that 1.0 code that's going to be tested here in the next couple of days for beta actually has both silos and handoff in the 1.0 load. So really, is the challenge dealing with uh, uh, new and different operating systems, or is, is, it, um, is there a challenge also when you've got new devices on existing operating systems coming out? The devices are principally driven by the OS and how well it behaves. So uh, Windows Mobile would be a comparison on one side of the spectrum. Each device in the Windows Mobile environment, because of the way that they're used by the manufacturer, hardware manufacturers, each one of those tends to be a custom development effort. For Nokia, as long as you're in the E-Series family, you're fine. A new E-Series phone tends to run the same like all the others. As far as the iPhone is concerned, obviously that's a very protected OS. Okay? There's only one hardware manufacturer for the iPhone, and so those all behave uniformly, as it were. Uh, as far as the BlackBerry, we talked about that, that the OS is uh, fairly well behaved, uh, but some of the uh, underpinnings of the uh, network types is causing some of the problems. As far as Android is concerned, the engineers have been veritably giddy uh, about the flexibility of that SDK. Uh, we wrote the original code under 1.6. It runs under 1.6, 1.5, 2.0, and 2.1 on LG, on Samsung, on HTC, and Motorola all at the same time. So there you've got the big benefit of, of an open operating system. In that, right at uh, once. Use, exactly. Happen. Right at once. Use it many times. Good. Uh, what are you seeing? Uh, what kind of devices are you seeing your, your users adopt most frequently? The, uh, the, the smartphone stats for the United States are principally those big three. It's going to be RIM, it's going to be Android, and it's going to be iPhone. That's about 85.8% of the smartphone market in the States. Mm -hmm. So uh, we were the first to come out with iPhone support uh, very quickly on the heels there with BlackBerry support. And that gets a lot of the market share defined purchased devices. When you then add in Android, then you get the mind share component as well. So an awful lot of our deals, uh, it's, you, you, we can't find a deal that doesn't involve iPhone and BlackBerry. Uh, and it is rare now that you don't find a deal that's got boots on the ground, as it were, for those two devices, and they want to know about when the Android support is going to come on as well. It's really interesting, I, I guess, that, that what that says about uh, the kinds of de devices and what, what the different businesses are looking for, um, because obviously you know, these devices are going to be for business and personal use in most cases. Exactly. The, uh, of course, some uh, would talk about the uh, BYOB, or, excuse me, BYOP, bring your own phone type of model, uh, but uh, principally because of security concerns, there's still an awful lot of people out there that do the, phone, the purchase of the phone for the business's perspective. So you've got both camps uh, weighing in on there. But the fact that you've got now smartphones that do so many different things. You've got retailers that are coming in with dual-purposed RFPs, if you will, that are asking for fixed mobile convergence capabilities and retail scanning capabilities all on the same device. So if it doesn't have a camera, it doesn't have Wi-Fi, you know, the device isn't in consideration. So that cuts out your bricks and your clamshells. Uh, and now you're really into the hardcore. I've got a computer on my hip, and it happens to you know, plug into my computer as well. Switching gears slightly. Um, sure. 
Anything new, uh, new going on with the U-Mobility platform? So we are in, uh, coming out of the beta testing now with our 4.0 load. Uh, which is going to bring in a lot of new capabilities to it. Uh, one will be the uh, the sale of fixed mobile convergence is still relatively new, and this is still is mm -hmm. be considered an emerging market. So when you sell it, you're selling a return on investment, and when you've got it employed, people want to make sure that they're continuing to get that return on that same investment. So in our di diagnostics area, we've added the ability to go down to the user level and show how much time they've spent on what type of network, how many handoffs they've had, all these different kinds of statistics, so I can find out do I have a rogue or do I have somebody who needs more training as far as using the system is concerned. We'll also have the infrastructure then for doing a learning algorithm, because there's three legs to the fixed mobile convergence stool. One is the call manager, the second is the mobility controller itself, and the third is that Wi-Fi network. And all the things that we used to be familiar with in the TDM, you know, the Erlang table, we now have to take account for in the RF space, just like the cellular networks have had to do. We have to do the same thing for Wi-Fi. So we'll have a learning algorithm in that platform that will allow us by access point since we are an environmentally based uh, handoff mechanism, what's going on right now, what's going on right now, always asking those questions. With this, we'll have the ability by access point to know which access points work well, which ones to avoid in order to give the customer the best voice service possible. Are there particular uh, types of customers that you see more interest or types of uh, potential customers that you see more interest from? The verticals tend to be all over the, the map. We've got people that are, are contract, uh, the, the architectural design development firms. Uh, we've got retail outlets. Of course, the carrier market is extremely strong for us because of the, the fact that we've been for so many years deployed in the carrier market space. The verticals that they're going after are residential as well as all of the uh, business users that they have as well. So there's not a real limit or a real focus to any particular one. Uh, uh, but if they are looking to, to leverage the wireless investment that they've already made and get more value out of it, uh, as well as some of the cost-saving things that you can do by having the cellular minutes be less and having your international go at wireline rates, they're a candidate for the application. So with nearly, nearly every business uh, by now uh, having deployed some sort of wireless network, is there any reason for businesses not to be looking at uh, fixed mobile convergence solutions. Sort of what's, what's your projection for the market going ahead? We looked at, uh, at our funnel of what was going on at the end of 2009 and realized that we had about one more quarter to get ready uh, and that 2010 was going to be the watershed year and we're already seeing that. We've got several announcements that we're gauging for shows that are coming up as, as you know in telecom. Mm -hmm. The summer is the, is the city of shows as it were uh, and so we have a number that we're going to be getting ready to announce here over the next 90 days uh, and we think that's going to set the tone then for the balance of the year. Well, excellent. I look forward to uh, hearing more about that. Uh, we've been here uh, talking at uh, uh, the historic Stonely Hotel in Dallas, Texas with Varajas Ed Cox. Ed, thanks for joining me. My pleasure, sir.